And now, a special presentation. Brought to you by Card Lab. Sports convention in the country. It's absolutely an enormous event. I, I can't believe how many collectors, dealers, businesses, entrepreneurs are all gathered in one place at the same time. It's heaven on earth. So the first day of National Wednesday, traditionally for me, it's kind of just been like a warm up, but it's just so crazy in the hobby that today was like a regular day of the show. The speakers overhead were like, guys, they're coming, like get ready. And everyone's like, we're still setting up because there's just so many people. People were running to submit their cards for grading with the grading companies. It was crazy, people were just so happy to be there. One guy just started clapping loudly. Just a one man applause. So it was, it was a lot of people there. So Card Ladder has a small, humble booth. We're, we're there, we have a presence, we're, we're talking to people. We've actually met with a bunch of, of customers. They were just like really, really happy about everything. And you know, cause we, we we see our side of it, we work on it and stuff, but to hear how they use it is cool. You know, just today, just hanging out at the Card Ladder booth. And you have to understand that the at the booth with Card Ladder is Grant Slayton, who's one of the great collectors in the hobby. And Grant has one of the most impressive display showcases here at the whole show. To me, you know, I haven't seen a better one yet, but I haven't seen all the display cases, but I love the stuff he collects. And if you were over there, that type of showcase attracts a lot of people. And one of the people that came over was the CEO of PSA, uh, Nat Turner. Hi, I'm Christina. We Hi. haven't actually Nat. met. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah, Chris. Oh my God, yeah, you're both tall. A little bit. <laughs> tall ladder. I saw this happening and I quickly finagled my way next to Nat Turner while he was talking to Grant Slayton, and I literally had a front row seat. Uh, that that yeah. one, uh, that's for a yeah. discussion. Yeah. Have you ever seen this one? I have, yeah. Number over seven? Yeah. Do you I've need it? it? I do, yeah. What, what, what do you want for it? Nat is just like, he's just a big time collector. He's just like a, a collector at heart. He just loves cards, so like if, if I can help find stuff for him, uh, I really enjoy doing that. I like bringing him cards that, that he's never seen before, he doesn't own, so. And Grant does the same thing. Grant's always got stuff that Nat really enjoys. All right. Got a deal. Oh, yeah. It's all yours, man. Get it, get it, get it, get it slapped. Okay. The fun thing about the show is you don't know what trades and what deals are going to go down until it starts to happen and the, the conversations start. So you just got to be ready and see what happens. <laughs> That's how it's done. There you go. <laughs> Another thing you would have seen if you were at the card lighter booth is so many great people, shop owners, collectors, dealers, content creators, come by and just say hello. Beautiful Jordans. What up, Chris? How you doing, buddy? People that I admire and respect. It's just so much fun. There was Jeremy Lee, there was Ben, Putnam Cards and Shay, their show, Hobby Update, they were there. There was Jake from 90s V-Ball Cards. Go nuts, man. All right, short stack. This is the one hand club, I got right? a couple other things. Okay, all right. Yeah, I saw, I saw Lefko was sharing this one. And Those are sick, huh? This Those is the are... first one I've seen in person. Too. Yeah. I've never had this one before. I've always wanted one, and they're tough to get. Yeah, they're impossible. Have you seen one of those in person? Not a green, only the reds. He's got his out too right there. That's the one 100 right there. 
You got, two, you got two of the ten right in your vicinity. There's probably the only two that are going to be at this entire show, too. It's just fun, man. It's just cool seeing everybody all in one spot. We're all just, we're all here for one reason, and we can, we not, we can all kind of relax a little bit. Nice to finally meet you. How are you? You find out everyone's just a, a cool person. Like that's just, you know, we're all just cool people hanging out. No, this is what I want to see. Like all this. Stuff. Oh, what if we did these? Two? Yeah, look. I haven't seen this party. Go, uh, she designed all this stuff. What? Her husband designed it. Stuff that I. BMGs, Rubies, all the. Uh, they worked at Clear and Skybox back in. Uh, I got to meet Jean Arena and I got to fangirl while I met her for the first time. Christina. Hi, it's so awesome to meet you. Her and her husband Earl are the masterminds of cards like the PMGs. So you have hobby celebrities and you have real world celebrities. And one of the real world celebrities that showed up to the national was Adam Lefko. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, it's good to see you guys. Good to see you. I was just talking to Josh. Okay. And I got to hold the LeBron, which is oh. very exciting. I was just showing him some of my cards, you know, stuff that he knows I have the LeBron RPA, the Chalk Toss Gold, PSA 10, so just some of that fun stuff. Did you have, you, have you gone to like these guys, LJ cars, you just see, they're the ones that bought the I, I know, dude. God, what a day to buy that. Holy. So it happened last week. Yeah. And then Jesse for PWCC was like, we're going to announce it today, which was very smart. Sure. But they offered it to Mahomes first. Oh, wow. And meeting him was a real treat. He, he's here because he loves cards and he loves the community. Same reason why we're all here. I'm just, I'm just taking all this in and realizing how crazy it's going to be tomorrow. Yeah, I think like this, this feels crazy to me. Yeah. Oh, like, really I crazy. Yeah. And now I'm realizing that there's going to be like thousands upon thousands of people. After the event, there was a private dinner put together, and the dinner was put together by Josh of Cardboard Chronicles and Card Ladder. Uh, Grant, Grant Slayton, and Rodman, uh, Rodman PC. And they put together this dinner and uh, it was just an absolute blast. A lot of the biggest names in the hobby uh, happened to come by. Two years ago, Grant and I got this idea to do like an after show party early on in the week to kind of kick things off, welcome everybody. And we wanted to make it more exclusive, a little bit more private to you know some of the content creators we know, high-end collectors, people that we've been friends with in the hobby for a long time. And uh, we feel like the exclusivity of, of it makes it fun for everybody that gets to go and they feel like they're having a good time. And we had some big celebrities show up and it was just a lot of fun. I, I, we just we, we really want everyone to just kind of have fun and kind of kick off the week. And it's just kind of like a, a meeting of the minds kind of thing. Like we all get in one room and hang out. So Thursday, we had the main stage at the National. Ivan and Rob and the guys with uh, GoGTS, they were kind enough to give us a little time slot. We really wanted to talk with people and engage, not just the people at the National, but people who couldn't make the National. So we decided to do a crossover live. Besides doing Card Ladder, which is a data tracking platform, we also do a show every Friday night on Instagram Live called The Crossover. And we are now bringing that show to the national. We took questions from the audience, which was fun. And we had a big crowd, I thought. A lot of people circled around, people supporting the show. We had some great people show up, like people who are usually in the chat. I see Card Killer, Peter Pac-Man. I see Dormant Stash. Dormant Stash is in the building. The stash is no longer dormant. It was a lot of fun. Dormant Stash, our great old friend Kyle. He got back involved in the hobby about a year ago and he started going through his old collection. He came across tons of Kobe rookies that he had, dozens and dozens of Kobe rookies. We 
went through them and definitely decided tons of the stuff is gradable. So we put together a group submission uh, to PSA. First step into the hobby again. And now we're just patiently waiting for our PSA bulk submission to come back home. One of the goals that we had going into this show was get cards graded by PSA. In particular, Stiff came into some nice cards. All right, so we're logged in. We're submitting two cards for Stiff Arm Wax, Bowl Bowl Prism Gold, Justin Jefferson Prism Rookie Signature. Banged out an order form and then dropped them off to get graded and they'll be graded by the end of the show. If this was two or three years ago, I'd say both cards have a shot at getting a 10 and at worst like a nine. But <laughs> grading seems to be a little stricter these days, a little more particular. And so yeah. we'll see what grades those get. Thursday night, we were invited to an exclusive party at the Capitol Grill, hosted by Ken Golden and Golden Auctions. The tease was that he's gonna announce something big, and when we got there, it was, it was cocktails, people mingling, a lot of big names in the hobby, it was, it was a lot of fun. Here we have beautiful bottles of wine, all of which will be consumed by Chris, because he's an alcoholic. So we've been friends with Adam Lefko for a while, and then we saw him at the dinner, and he was really excited to come show Chris and I and some of the other collectors around us what he had gotten at the show. Because he's been dabbling for a while, but he hadn't quite picked up that big grail PC card yet. Do you want to take a guess? I'm really proud of him. We had no idea what to expect. His, he collects a wide range of stuff. We had no idea what it's going to be. I'll show you two at the same time. Get their reaction. Oh, oh yes. yes. Dude. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at his eyes, look at his eyes. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so he ended up picking up a 2003 uh, limited logos exquisite Dwayne Wade PSA 7, which is a, you know, it's a monster card. That's actually a game used jersey from his rookie year. And he did the whole consolidation thing, which is something we've talked about a lot. And uh, he sold a lot of stuff to get to it. And he worked with Mike Hans on the deal, who's one of the best in the biz. So he was really excited about that. Amazing. That's a monster card one to be very proud of. I did want to make an announcement. Ken broke some news, which was very exciting. We have a contract for a show called The Golden Tuck. And his new show, a reality show about his auction house and about the hobby and about him, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I think he said Peyton Manning is executive producer. I think I heard Ken say it's going to be similar to Selling Sunset on Netflix, what that did for real estate. So kind of get some, you know, interesting characters and bring a different angle to the hobby. It's going to be something we hope appeals to tens if not hundreds of millions of people. And um, I hope I'm doing it till I'm 70 years old. So on that note, cheers to everybody. So Thursday night was crazy. We had a lot of things going on, and Chris, Josh, and I actually had to split up to cover them all. I had to depart with Nick and Kyle. We ended up going downtown to Chicago. We were partnered on an event with Collectible, DraftKings, PWCC, Bullpen LA, just to name a few. I saw Mike and Jesse from Sports Card Nonsense podcast on the Ringer Network. Yeah, Mike and Jesse with Sports Cards Nonsense have one of the most important shows in the entire hobby. They're huge personalities. It's a lot of fun to be around them. They definitely bring a new, a fresh energy to the hobby scene, but they're also really sharp guys, and Mike is extremely knowledgeable about cards in general, about the industry. We had a great time, a lot of laughs. It was really fun. <laughs> Thursday night, there were two trade nights. One was put on by Jimmy, Kentucky Basketball Cards, and Ryan, Card Collector 2. Yeah, I made the trip over to the, the trade night and hung out in the lobby. We just found a lot of great collectors hanging out in the lobby between the shows. And it looked like the Card Collector 2 show was massive. An insane amount of people. I, I was at the one of his earlier ones in 2018. And so to go from wh where he was then to where he is now, it's, it's just impressive, it's really unbelievable. 
And the second trade night was also at the same venue. It was hosted by Joe and it featured Project 70 artists who also many of them worked on Top Project 2020, including Blake Jameson. Blake is near and dear to my heart because he was actually the inspiration for Christina's Corner. So it was really great to meet Blake in person because I had talked to him on Zoom and interviewed him, but I had never met him in person. So another instance of why the National is so important to attend because it's like all of these connections you make throughout the year, like crystallize and become fully formed friendships in person at the National. We all hung out, talked, it was a good time. Friday, right before the show ended, Josh and Chris were invited to be on the Collectible panel. On stage with Josh and I were the host from Collectible, Alan Golcher, who did an excellent job. And the other panelists were Rich Mueller from Sports Collectors Daily, DJ Ski, Dan Silversheen from Collectible as well, Jack Settleman, and Sky Greenberg from Starstock. It was definitely a spectrum of perspectives that normally you wouldn't hear in the same hour at the same location. There were a lot of startups once the hobby started crushing it that saw a niche, that saw an opening, had a great idea and went with it. And um, my friends, um, Chris McGill and Josh Johnson uh, at Card Ladder, there, there are a couple of those people. Give us like the Reader's Digest condensed version of what Card Ladder is about. Card Ladder. Everything you need to know about cards is within your grasp. The Card Ladder app, you know, it's everything to me and, and Chris and the team. We put everything we have into that app, listening to customers and hearing their feedback and trying to, to make the app as best as we can. The best tools to help you track your cards. Watch the trends, stay informed, compare cards, and track the growth of your personal collection, all in one simple and intuitive platform. Card Ladder is providing people with education, with information, with knowledge. And we do that just by organizing and presenting information in one place in a way that makes the hobby a little bit easier to navigate so that it's a little bit easier to learn about cards a little bit quicker. It's coming straight from us. You know, it's coming straight from a place of passion on our team. And we're just going to keep rolling out features. We're going to keep rolling out new cards. It's not going to stop. It's just going to keep getting better and better. And the pace at which we do things is going to be much faster than anyone else. Chris Miguel, Josh Johnson, Woo! and uh, we are collectible. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your week. Great job, guys. After the panel was done, we got an email that Nick's PSA order popped. We're submitting two cards for Sip Arm Wax, Bowl Bowl Prism Gold, Justin Jefferson Prism Rookie Signature. So we immediately booked it over to PSA. I think the results are going to be Bowl Bowl Prism Gold PSA. Justin Jefferson, Prism Rookie Autograph, PSA 10. The Bobo Gold is going to be a 10. And the Jefferson is going to be an 8. <laughs> okay, so we got our grades back and haven't looked at them yet. So the Bobo is first. God damn! What do you think it is? Yeah, I think it is. It's a nine. That's good. The nine is good. Very good grade. Congrats. If that's a nine, I think that's going to be a ten. Oh, no! <laughs> See it. Ready? Yeah. Nine. That's fair, but but it's just funny because that the bowl bowl's been everywhere, and the paninis, that one never left the cage, but that's just the way it is. So after we got Nick's grading order back, we uh, headed back to our hotel. And then we're leaving the convention center and we run into G. And he 
was telling us about some major pickups that he made that day at the National. Went back to the lobby. We were hanging out, taking a little break before dinner. And we sat down, and he had a bunch of his cars from his collection with him. And we just went through them all. All right, let's start with 2019-20. Okay. So this would pair nicely with your bowl bowl of prism go. Yeah. There you go. Yes. Do a one. Yeah. Why do you have to laugh? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, this is my year. Do you like that one? Love yeah, I, mean, I do this. love it. It is a beautiful design. Love this. And he showed us the whole prism gold run of Steph Curry, which he has. <laughs> Having the whole prism gold run is just ridiculous. And all of them are gem mints except for one. That's a BGS9. Very, very impressive. His set of curry prism golds is phenomenal. G was actually one of the very first guys to really get on the Luca train hard. Oh. <laughs> he showed us his Luca National Treasures RPA. So many people have touched my D this way. It's just <laughs> insane. And so many more cards, just so many. Damn. Yeah. Do you have both one of ones? What the hell? And then Kaboom. You know, I love Kaboom. Kaboom is amazing. A lot of dudes coming after me wow. on this one. 2018. Lesko is trying to sweet top me, and I'm just stonewalling at anyone who wants this bar. <laughs> it was awesome. Very, very impressive collection. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. No big deal. You can go through it. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like cards. Take one. I like the stack, right? <laughs> I think the cards speak for themselves, and the cards are gorgeous. Let this, let this young and there was even this kid, hey, how are you? and he kept like moving his chair closer and closer so that he could see the cards. Durant's my favorite. Durant, oh! Kevin Durant throws it down! So was it Did like when Durant guys? was on the Warriors where you started rooting for him, or was it like, whoa? Well, Curry's like, like one of my favorites as well. Okay, nice. Actually, one of my favorite curries. Ooh. Is it shoe card? This guy is something special. It is amazing what Steph Curry can do with a basketball. That could be the greatest move I've ever seen. <laughs> Many of us collected and or were fans of sports as kids. Hey, it's gonna be special. They're gonna talk about this forever, baby. They're gonna talk about this forever. Kansas City, we did it, baby. Let's go score and this thing, baby. Oh my God, that's incredible. Patriots win the Super Bowl. What a comeback. Athletes can leave a strong impression because Culturally, they can become archetypes. For a certain belief, or a certain character trait. They symbolize something big that then becomes much bigger than the task that they're performing that transcends sports. And represents something that we can identify with. I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. It's a great game. I feel it's an honor for me to be part of it. I didn't do it to make the paper or get on TV. We just played for fun. He literally said to his dad, his dad was like, let's go. Like, do you want to leave? And the kid was like, never.
last day of the national, I am physically exhausted, uh, but I have to I have to power through and, and try to see everyone that I wanted to see. I made a couple last minute runs to see some tables and people I wanted to meet. You know, you feel kind of bummed when you didn't get to say goodbye to somebody or you're not sure when the last interaction was. So like to have those last minute ones are, are usually pretty good. I'm, I'm tired, man. It's been a long show. I'm ready to sleep, but uh, it was fun. First national, so. Pac-Man is the foremost content creator on YouTube for the hobby. He has the most subscribers. His videos have by far the most views, and he just makes really great, engaging content. I met so many people, like, yeah. uh, and people that I have and haven't met before. You know, some people who I had like a profile picture attached to them, but I'd never seen, like, seen the face. Sure. So um, it was cool to meet them and. You know, see guys like at Panini and PSA, just you know, all these companies, and uh, oh, it's a fun show. And then when you get to meet him in person finally for the first time, he's incredibly humble, gracious, one of the great successful hobby content creators. So Bullpen LA was Chris and myself's LCS when we lived in Los Angeles when he was at law school. Mitch and Ty are the two owners, and they became our family in Los Angeles, really, and they're just great. Do you have any thoughts about the um, women dinner last night? It was awesome. We had a good time. Yeah. We had fun. It was great. We had fun. It was, it was a little nuts. We had a women in car drinks and dinner event on Saturday night of the National. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun to be able to have a group of us meet up. It was completely nuts, but it was that's what made it so great. Yeah. Then yeah. I made fun of her the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> While I was saying goodbye to Bullpen, Sam from Women of the Hobby was also there. And she's a great advocate for women in cards as well. So Sam, yeah. how was your first national? It was great, it was awesome. Uh, picked up a few things, but as I've been saying, my biggest pickup is the people that I've been meeting. Like, uh, so I, I haven't met any of these people in person really, so it's been, it's been nice to meet them in person. Yay! Awesome, thank you guys. No, thank you. All right, we have to close down our booth. The last day of the national is kind of like walking around a ghost town because everybody's still there, but you know that everybody's not gonna be here in a few hours. And it, nobody really wants it to end. Carvin Chung, also known as the architect, also known as the card father, is famous in the hobby for many reasons. One of them being as a product designer and the creator of Exquisite. Marvin is a really great person and someone that I love sharing the hobby with and we have a lot of great discussions. You know, that's a really great thing that we have in this hobby that you can't get in a lot of other places that we're able to actually speak face to face with people that we consider friends that were so heavily involved in the creation of this stuff. Sasha? You good? Yeah, we're good. How are you? Sasha is a friend of ours from Los Angeles, and it was awesome seeing him at the National. When you get to know him, it's it's always a meaningful conversation. How, how did you guys do that? Like, you just come to network and kind of like... Yeah, I was just networking and seeing people, like seeing people from SoCal that we miss all the time now, you know, like yourself. Yeah. But like, bullpen, we spent a lot of, I spent a lot of time with Ty and Mitch. Like, yeah, I saw Ty and yeah. Mitch in the lobby. We had a good talk. Sasha is one of the foremost personalities in the hobby. He has a magnetism to him. Recently, there was a Washington Post article published about his exploits and adventures within the sports card industry. What was your favorite card that you got show? Okay, so I had two deals set up already. Gotcha. And that was, that was this one? So yeah, three. I saw that, yep. I thought that was Nate. That's an then. absolute monster. Yeah, I was like, okay. that was the only only time I was like, oh, I have one, one shot if I was the LeBron exquisite, I have to like jump on it. And then it was this one too. Sign in times, yeah. nice. Yeah. So, That's a beautiful card. Congratulations. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. And it's always a treat to run into him and get to chat a little bit about the hobby. Leaving the National was really sad. Like, I think everyone was kind of exhausted, especially from standing on concrete for four days, five days. But you just don't want to leave. It's kind of like the end of summer, like when you're a kid. It was everything you thought it could be, 
and then some. Last day of the National, here with the great Dr. James Beckett. Dr. James Beckett is the first head on the hobby Mount Rushmore. To me, he's a hobby icon, a leader, and a role model. I uh, really can't heap enough praise or respect or recognition um, on his name. Dr. Beckett, one question for you. Is this the greatest national of all time? Uh, let's see, if I say it would be the best one I've ever been to, <laughs> I've enjoyed it more. Uh, the 91 national was spectacular, but I was kind of corporate in those days. Not as much fun. So I'm a free agent now, I get to roam around, look at cards, see old friends, meet new friends, stuff like that. So it's terrific. Jim is the single most important historical figure in the hobby. The team here at Card Ladder looks up to him greatly and we uh, are very grateful to have his praise and blessing on what we've built at Card Ladder and we're extremely proud of that. Being able to follow in his footsteps, so to, uh, so to speak, is, is really important to us and we take that very seriously. The hobby as it exists today would be nothing without Dr. Beckett. It doesn't need to get any better than this. If next year's better, I can't even imagine. Couldn't have said it better myself. The next year of the hobby is going to be utterly unpredictable. And I think we can only take this thing a few days or a few weeks at a time. I think we're in for an action packed next year with plenty of twists and turns. And I just see the hobby quite honestly continuing to grow and uh, more and more people continuing to uh, enjoy it just as much if not more than I do.